Is your child suffering from any of these symptoms? ADHD, bedwetting, nightmares, difficulty in schools and academy struggles, low IQ, aggressive behavior, sensory issues, emotional instability, anxiety and depression, restless sleep, daytime sleepiness, delayed growth, clenching or grinding their teeth or bruxism, morning grouchiness and tiredness, mouth breathing, snoring, chronic allergies, difficulty to swallow, especially hard food, swollen tonsils and adenoids, frequent upper respiratory infection, asthma, crowded or crooked teeth, speech issues, dark circles under the eyes or venous pulling. Well, all of these may seem very different. However, they may all share a common root cause. Today, I will discuss the common root cause of many of the above conditions and holistic and integrative solutions for those children who are suffering from these conditions. My name is Mayam Horayat. I'm a biological dentist at Aria Dental, where we provide various holistic and integrative dental services, including guided growth in children, TMJ, sleep apnea, snoring and airway solution, with the support of our dedicated board certified specialist for all ages in South Orange County, California. Our goal is to reach and help as many people as we can. If you're an adult who has a sleep apnea, or you're looking for an alternative to the CPAP, or perhaps you snore so loud that forces you to sleep in a separate room from your partner, or struggling with a brain fog, chronic fatigue, daytime sleepiness, TMJ pain, morning headaches, depression and anxiety, overweight and obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes, then watch this video. What we have learned is that adults with sleep apnea, snoring and airway issues often had signs and symptoms when they were a child. Most likely, you will see some of these things in yourself when you were a child. In our office, when we meet our patients, we take a lot of pictures and look at those pictures and digital models to determine whether these patients are in a healthy category or unhealthy category. These are the pictures of some of my young patients. Do they look healthy to you? Some of these young patients look normal, healthy, and very cute, but they struggle with one or more of the above symptoms. This is a copy of my children's sleep screening. Let's look at them in detail. First patient, seven years old, AHI of 12, severe sleep apnea. It means the patient stops breathing more than 12 times per hour, more than 10 seconds, that oxygen saturation drops more than 3%. Look at this. Patient stops from 10 to 43 seconds. Oxygen saturation drops from 99 to 83%. This is another sleep screening of a six-year-old, AHI of nine, moderate sleep apnea. The patient stops breathing from, from 10 seconds to 44 seconds per hour at each episode. Oxygen saturation drops from 99% to 83%. Let's look at the third patient, a nine-year-old, AHI of 30, means the patient stops breathing 30 times per hour, more than 3% of oxygen saturation. His oxygen saturation drops from 99% to 71%. He stops breathing from 10 to 50 seconds, almost a minute. Why are these children struggling to have adequate oxygen in sleep when they are resting? What's happening? Now let's watch our young patient's testimonial, Jaden. He says that he can sleep better, concentrate more, and get better grades in school because of his upper jaw expansion for a nice arch form and more space for his tongue. Watch this. Hi, I'm Jaden. Um, I'm 10 years, 11 years old, and uh, I started braces and expanders here, and it changed the way that I smile and I have better grades, I sleep better, and it's so much easier, and it's helped me a lot. And, and if I wasn't here, I think it would be way harder for everything. Jaden, do you sleep longer and better and deeper and you wake up more fresh because of expansions and you're breathing better? Yes, it feels amazing. And I'm getting really good grades because of it. Awesome. Do you feel like now you don't have that much congestion because of your expansions and your airways more open and you feel more? Yeah. Through expanders, I guess a couple of times, but not as many times as I usually do. Good. I'm so glad it's working out really well for you. Yeah, thank you. 
Now let's look at this child's baby teeth. Does it look common and healthy to you? All teeth are present with no sign of cavities, no space, no crowding, no worn teeth, no sign of grinding. It seems perfect, but this is not a normal case. This is an unhealthy child because of underdeveloped upper and lower jaw, also known as maxilla and mandible, that most likely will lead to crowding and malocclusion as the permanent teeth gets erupted. Besides, in most cases, children like this will have many other airway issues, sleep breathing disorder, and ultimately health issues. Let's talk about normal growth versus abnormal growth. Before I start, let's go over some terminology. This is a sample of the human head and face. Mandible, the lower jaw to which our tongue muscles are attached to. Maxilla is the upper jaw housing upper teeth, but it also extends to the floor of the nose, no septum, and inside of the orbital cavity where the eyes are. Here are the growth and developmental stage of the human skulls from the age of two to adulthood. By the age of two, approximately 80% of skull growth is typically completed with most of the rapid growth occurring during the first year of life when the brain experiences significant development and the skull expands to accommodate it. After the age of two, there are no significant changes in the size of head. The growth from age of two to 18 mainly appears in upper and lower jaw or face, also known as maxilla and mandible. Let's break it down even further. By the age of two, about 55% of the maxillary and mandibular growth is completed. By the age of four, more than 75% of the facial growth is completed. And by the age of 12, 90% of the facial skeletal growth in females and 90% of growth in males are completed. After the age of 12, a slow gradual maturation process continues with the majority of facial features reaching near adult size by the mid-teens. The conclusion is that when the child is growing toward an underdeveloped jaw at the age of four, we need to evaluate around age of four to five and possibly intervene in naturally guided growth while the child's still growing to prevent skeletal growth issue and need for orthodontic treatment and airway issues. Now the question is, why are so many children suffering from abnormal growth and development? Why do we see so many children with crooked and crowded teeth? Why do 80% of kids need orthodontic treatments? Why are we seeing so many children with health issues and conditions like ADHD and more? The answer to these questions originate from great researchers such as Weston Price, a dentist in 1900s, Dr. James Wallace, a dentist in 1900s, and Dr. Robert Corricini, an anthropologist. Dr. Weston Price traveled the world and studied isolated primitive groups living on endogenous foods like Eskimos, Native Americans, African tribes, and Polynesian. He found that these groups breastfeed their children for two to three years, followed by a greedy, hard, natural, and mostly raw diet with no sugar, no preservative, or processed food, display perfect occlusion or bite with excellent upper jaw arch length and width without any need for orthodontic intervention. However, when isolation was broken and after contact with modern societies and a shift to a soft diet and refined sugar, the rate of malocclusion due to underdeveloped jaws rose from the first generation and passed on to the next generation. Dr. James Welles' research in 1900 also showed that a soft diet prevents the development of the muscle fibers of the tongue, resulting in a weaker tongue, which results in an underdeveloped upper and lower jaw, which lead to crowding of the permanent teeth. Dr. Coricini, an anthropologist, traveled the world and performed 30 years of various research and published hundreds of journals. His research showed breastfeeding results in proper training and development of the tongue. Then the early heart diet continues the process. And when the tongue postures, swallows, and speaks properly, then when we get ideal and proper jaw growth and a nice U-shaped arch form for all permanent adult teeth to erupt normally without being crowded or malocclusion. He concluded that most malocclusion is acquired, not genetic. Malocclusion is a disease of Western diet and lifestyle. Our conclusion is many malocclusions and underdeveloped jaw growth in Western societies are due to two main factors. One, lack of adequate lengthy breastfeeding. Two, soft and processed food. As a result of underdeveloped jaw and abnormal growth, 
we see a narrow arch form, backward and excessive downward maxilla and mandible, instead of a normal cranial facial growth, which is wide, forward and downward. When the arch form is improper, underdeveloped and narrow, then we get the most common orthodontic problem, which is crowded and crooked teeth that lead to malocclusion and poor bite. This is why more than 80% of children need orthodontic intervention. In addition, we know that if upper jaw is not fully developed, the lower jaw cannot fully develop either, because the upper jaw and teeth will trap the lower jaw, and the lower jaw cannot move forward and downward into correct position. Then when the lower jaw gets backward and excessively downward, the tongue is pushed backward, leading to a compromised airway. Compromised airways, improper tongue posture, narrow palate, and small nasal passage, resulting from underdeveloped maxilla and mandible, are increasing the risk for mouth breathing, snoring, sleep apnea, upper respiratory disturbance, and sleep fragmentation. This in turn creates many other physiological and cognitive issues for children. As a result, these children will grow to unhealthy adults with various unexplained health issues from depression and anxiety, chronic fatigue, brain fog, and more. What can we do to prevent it? If a child is under age of two, we encourage breastfeeding and the early start of chewing hard food. If you're concerned about choking, look into baby feeders. Make sure that your baby gets evaluated for tongue and lip tie, even though you may think the baby's mom does not have any latching issues. Watch your child to make sure there is no habitual mouth breathing and your baby is a nasal breather. If not, you may want to consult with a pediatric medical doctor. If your child is older than two, you may need a consultation with a holistic integrative dentist trained in airways. As a holistic dentist, I look for the real root cause of an underdeveloped jaw. Then we offer various techniques such as intelligent airway reports and skeletal growth evaluation by Vivos Therapeutics, guided growth appliance therapy by Vivos Therapeutics, myofunction therapy to evaluate and train the tongue, posture and function, conventional orthodontic and clear aligners such as Invisalign, ALF appliances, light or flexible wire appliance therapy, laser treatment for release of tongue tie and lip tie. I work in collaboration with our board certified specialists, myofunctional therapies, ENT, pediatric MDs, naturopaths, functional medicine, and chiropractors to address any issues and make sure the patient is growing and breathing properly to prevent malocclusion and an underdeveloped job. If you're an adult where skeletal growth has been completed, as an alternative to CPAP, we offer many non-surgical appliance therapy such as DNA appliances, mRNA, MAD or mandibular advancement devices, and laser treatment for an underdeveloped narrow jaw that have led you to sleep apnea, snoring, and mouth breathing. I hope you find this video helpful. Please like below and subscribe to our holistic oral health videos. A healthier mouth means a healthier life, ultimately a happier life. Thank you.